Hello, Mars One fans. Uh, I'm Lieutenant Commander Oscar Matthews, U.S. Navy, and we just attended the MIT versus uh, Mars One debate at the Mars Society here in sunny Washington, D.C. I've got some thoughts on the debate, and I welcome you to join me on a nice discussion and drive through the District of Columbia. Hello, I'm Lieutenant Commander Oscar Matthews, United States Navy. I am at the Mars Society Convention with a few of my closest Mars 100 friends. Getting to the point, uh, is Mars 1 feasible? I thought the MIT debate uh, actually, <laughs> based on the report, ignored the fact that it was based on the report and ignored the fact that uh, uh, large portions of the report were, were good and uh, done appropriately and that um, significant portions, I wouldn't say the majority, uh, were actually not done in the proper way. When you do a report that's based on a model and simulation, which is another uh, expertise that I have, um, you first of all need to adhere to certain basic modeling and simulation validation and verification standards that uh, are uh, really always included in uh, peer-reviewed uh, studies, papers, abstracts, anything. So as a peer, right, as a PhD candidate in aerospace engineering, when I was reading this paper, I um, acknowledged that MIT and uh, the students that it produces are excellent um, and, and very, very good at what they do. But in this particular case, I, I had just a, a little confusion, a little reservation in terms of uh, the lack of discussion for that particular uh, verification and validation of the model. It's an open source model that they used, and uh, from what I could tell, they never actually said what it was um, in the 35 or whatever pages of the report. But when you get into it and they finally figured out, you know, okay, well, these are the results we got, they never actually uh, adhered to the, the NASA standards which govern modeling and simulation. Um, so NASA standard 7009, which there should have been a discussion about that, um, actually requires that when you present results to NASA leadership, which they did at the NASA FISO Telecon, very uh, generally speaking, uh, presented their results, you have to include um, a discussion on model verification and validation, basically the section four process in uh, NASA Center 7009. These guys are NASA fellows, they're working for NASA, they're doing NASA work. They should be held uh, accountable to the same NASA standards that all models and simulations for NASA are held to. The students uh, made assumptions, and I think gross assumptions, about a very high level strategy that Mars One uh, was trying to communicate, and maybe not so effectively on their website. But of course, you know, Mars One is a startup. It's it's um, in its initial phase, and it's trying to generate interest in an idea that I think most people would agree we should do. Engineering, by its very nature, is an iterative process, right? If you have a plan, and uh, you go back, and you have new uh, data, then you can go back to the beginning and, and put in new inputs and get new outputs. And that, um, that process is essentially the scientific method. We use it in engineering just the same way, because we also are scientists. And when... Um, you say that uh, you can't have a plan that that changes. You're saying that the um, the only the only way things are feasible is if they have static plans. And nobody on Earth makes static plans. That's that's not the um, the purpose of plans. The purpose of plans is for them to be dynamic and to change with ever changing conditions. When you think about everything in its totality, right? Mars One's small. The mission is huge. The excitement is uh, massive. The the attention being uh, poured onto this is is actually stunning to be to be perfectly honest, um, and really I think uh, uh, an indicator of how much people want this to happen. In its essence, Mars One in encourages uh, uh, liaisons and partnerships and uh, collaborations. We need that to happen, but um, when you have such a high level strategy laid out, um, that's not the appropriate time to do a detailed cost analysis or a detailed mission plan uh, architecture. The most valid points of their, of their report include uh, in situ resource utilization, 3D printing, the manufacturability of items on the surface. It's absolutely critical. Andrew got it absolutely right. I, uh, I really respect Andrew for um, bringing to light the fact that uh, we need to develop that specific technology along with others to, to close the supply chain problem, right? It's, it's a manufacturing, uh, manufacturability problem. It's um, not uh, that we have a 3D printer already working on Mars. Of course, that would be, I mean, somebody would be a billionaire if they already had that done, right? It's, 
it's something we need to continue to work on. So the question is, what level of risk are we willing to accept? How, how much money, how much national treasure are we willing to invest to get that capability? That's the discussion that they should have had and not a technical, detailed uh, analysis of a plan that wasn't at that stage yet. We have to remember, please remember that Mars One is a project management organization. Just like the London company and the Virginia company didn't make wooden sailing vessels to go to Jamestown in the New World, Mars One is not making the rockets, for example, or the spacesuits, or you know the ISRU modules that go inside the, the, the lander. So the expectation needs to be established that Mars One is going to be technically competent enough to, to run a technical uh, execution of, I believe, a credible mission plan at a high level. The level of reward in this case is we're trying to put humans on another planet. And it's a massive engineering challenge, okay? Sydney said it, it's, it is. But it's not impossible. It's impossible uh, only if people lose hope and uh, people forget how, um, you know, plans and uh, the scientific it, method is always and constantly uh, being refined and changed and updated. You can't, you can't just um, <laughs> slam somebody for, for not having everything you want at the moment you want it. You have to be patient, and when that happens, then people can work together and create a very positive and dynamic environment where things can get done. So I think an important thing to remember is that um, Mars One and uh, a lot of other fledgling space programs uh, for the new commercial space and the new new space um, paradigm that we're living in, the era, um, it's it's like a baby. It's um, really early stage, and um, it has a lot of potential. The, the feasibility argument, I think, as presented by MIT, is just not there. You have to, you have to adhere to standards and, um, a lot of the things that, uh, are being used as negatives for feasibility, um, will probably be solved. And I know that's, um, kind of an opinion statement, but, uh, if you look at the history of the things they talked about, um, 12 years forward into the future, uh, if you, if you go backwards from that, 12 years into the past, um, these things were, uh, almost non-existent. And so they've been created in the same amount of time you're saying they can't be improved. And I just think that's um, not really a strong position to take. But if Mars One is a baby, and uh, and this baby uh, has potential to grow and to learn and to change and adapt, you know, we don't expect a baby to, to do advanced partial differential equations, for example, because it's not uh, the appropriate time to start discussing that, right? You need to uh, crawl before you walk, before you run, and um, you build trust in the system and in the model and at a very high level. At a very high level, I don't think anybody would argue that uh, rockets work, <laughs> that uh, you know the laws of physics are the same everywhere in the universe, uh, for example. And um, when you think of it that way, uh, the things that Mars One's uh, putting forth are not incredibly surprising things. They're um, technologies that can be adapted there are things that need to be extensively tested, but as we all know, testing requires funding. Changes to engineering designs require funding. Um, you know, even even um, responding to to uh, critics uh, requires funding. So uh, you know, you have to take it uh, for what it is. And uh, you know, Mars One needs to, of course, listen to criticisms because it makes the overall plan stronger. So in closing, I, I'd like to uh, sincerely. Uh, congratulate Sydney Doe and, and Andrew Owens for, and, and the rest of their team, uh, for um, their debate performance. I thought uh, having a debate um, at the Mars Society was wonderful, splendid. The energy and the excitement it generated was uh, pretty palpable, and uh, it was fun to be there. It was, it was, it felt like um, I don't know, maybe the old uh, timey debates that uh, scientists used to have. So, so going forward, uh, let's uh, let's work together to get um, the appropriate expectations set the appropriate details uh, in the future once they uh, are available, and, and let's ha continue the conversation. Let's keep the conversation moving forward uh, because that conversation will be what changes the plan and makes the plan safer for everybody. Thanks again, guys. Bye. Thanks for watching. If you have any thoughts on the Mars One feasibility debate or Oscar's take on it, feel free to comment below and join the discussion. This week's feature video is a presentation given by Australian Mars One candidate Josh Richards on the inspirational achievements of American physicist and astronaut Sally Ride. Next up will be a Mars One mission update, reviewing and examining the project's developments from the past month. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss it.